Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for this tutorial, we're going to be doing some Havana twists. You're going to need your shining jam and you're also going to need your braiding hair. And the braiding hair we're going to be using today is the expression braiding hair. And I'm going to tell you guys why I love to use expression for my twist. It's because they're not silky. When you're doing twists, you want to make sure you're working with hair that's not like silky, that could easily unravel when you, you know, do your twist method. And I'm going to tell you guys the difference between Marley twist, rope twist, Havana twist, and Snigglies twist because I know we all get really confused. So Marley twist is when you use literally Marley hair to do your client's hair. Typically this style is more compatible with people who have, who have natural hair so keep that in mind. And then these are rope twist. Now rope twist is when you literally twist from the roots. Okay it comes in different sizes. This is the large size and it comes in medium size which is this one right here and it can be done with expression braiding hair um, because like I said it's not slippery. Now this is the Havana twist. Havana twists are more chunkier version of the rope twist. So typically when you see Havana twist they're a lot bigger than the regular rope twist and it's a Senegalese twist and the difference is that it's literally twist it's literally starts with braids at the roots so that's the difference between all these four different types of twist the marley twist the sniggly twist the rope twist the havana twist all that and i know they all look the same but they're really not um but you know just thought i'd clear that up because i've been getting a lot of questions about that lately and i just kind of wanted to touch on it really quickly so now that we talked about that, I'm just going to go ahead and get into this tutorial. As you guys see, I'm doing a different parting style. This is my upside down U part style that I used to do way, 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 way back in the day. And I think it's more compatible for a Vanna twist because you get more twist that way as opposed to doing the box parting. It's more full. Uh, it's a lot fuller. <laughs> And um, yeah, so with the Havana twist, you're pretty much going to be doing the same twist method as the rope twist. The only difference is literally the size of your twist. I feel like Havana twists have like a really, really chunkiness to them. Like they're just really big twists. And uh, rope twists are more like the literally like slip, like I guess a medium size and like consistent uh, size throughout but like, I don't know, Havana twists are just like bigger to me but my client wanted the um, not like she didn't want her braids to be too thick because she um is giving birth really soon so she wanted to be able to wear her hair for a little bit longer uh into labor and all that stuff so um so we kind of had to reduce the size just a teeny 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 bit um but yeah just um to, you know let you guys know if you were to be doing havana twist you would have to make the parts bigger you would also have to make the size of the braiding hair a little bit chunkier so that way you can get bigger chunkier twist okay great <laughs> So when I do my parts, I like to do it to where it falls naturally to the client's natural hair. Like the way their hair would fall down is how I, you know, typically part the hair. So literally just like an upside down U in a like in between two, I guess, braids. And you want the upside down U to connect into a V at the base, if that makes sense. So when you do the hair, you place in the hair onto a natural hair, twist into the right. You swap hands, take the other end, twist it to the right as well before you swap your hands. Um, so after you swap your hands, um, like when I say swap hands, you do the crisscross and then make sure you continuously twist while you crisscross. Now, if you don't twist before you crisscross, your twists will unravel. And I say this all the time and I get questions like, hey Mary, my twists are still unraveling. What am I doing wrong? Literally the only thing that I know for sure messes people up is when you don't twist and you swap hands. Like like you just kind of like swap hands without twisting. And another thing, thing too is your grip. So when you're twisting, you want to make sure it's actually twisted tight. Like you don't want to loosely twist it because if you do that it will kind of be soft your twist will be soft and more likely to unravel especially after you dip it in hot water it's going to loosen up a little bit so when you're twisting it make sure your grip is strong make sure your twist is actually like completely twisted before you swap your hands because if you don't do that your twist is literally going to be like a soft potato and then when you dip it in hot water it's going to be like mashed potatoes 
<laughs> so you want to make sure you you know you twist really really tight um, so that way when you dip it in hot water it just loosens the, the 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 grip that you had just a little bit so where your twist comes out like literally perfect like mm perfect uh, so when you get to the ends what I like to do with my twist some people like to braid it when you get to the end however uh, it's up to you personal preference I like to tie knots uh, because I feel like that's the most secure thing you could possibly do unless you unravel unless you literally go into your hair and untie the knot that is the only way your twist is gonna come undone so that's my insurance policy whenever like god forbid a client texts me like hey my twist is coming undone I know there has been some manip manipulation happening because my twist never would come undone because it has knots at the end okay so it's just that added measure that I like to take to make sure that you know everything stays nice and put Okay, now you could do the braids. I'm pretty sure braids braids can unravel. Okay, I don't I don't care what anybody says. Braids can unravel if you do it at the end. It doesn't matter. Let's say they're like a crazy sleeper. Um, like when they sleep, they sleep really rough. It could unravel. So I just like to tie a knot just to be safe and just have it tied and done with. Okay, um, but yeah. So as you can see, I'm trying to do the parts. I like to make sure that it's literally perfect and positioned in the right place where it naturally would be, as opposed to doing an ups upside down part in an awkward position like I literally want the hair to fall naturally to the way her hair would naturally fall if she was to take a brush and brush out her hair so that's the point of these upside down parts they're very very natural they give you know they give you more braids if you want something really full I recommend this part in style um, if you wanted something that would make your scalp show a little bit more I recommend doing box parting if you wanted something a little bit bigger I would recommend triangle parts. So there are different parting, you know, styles you could do depending on what your client is looking for. That's why consultation is so, so, so important. Sometimes I don't consultate really well and then I end up doing something that I think they want. So, and it just causes a lot of confusion. So I always try my best to make sure I am communicating, you know, correctly and trying to figure out exactly what you want. Because if I don't know what you want, how can I give you what you want? So you have to talk about it. How do you want your braids to look? Do you want it to look full? Do you want it to be, you know, just thick in terms of like the the braid itself? Do you want your scalp to show? Like, what do you want, you know, in terms of your look and the style you're going for? Um, yeah, I know when people see braids, you just think like, oh, it's just braids. You just go sit there and get your braids done. But like, there are actually a lot of details that go into it. Um, people want certain things. They want things customized a certain way to suit their hair, you know, shape and all that good stuff. So that's why consultation is very important. Okay. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm taking that shining jam and applying it to the base of the hair and then I split the hair in half and make sure that the shining jam has literally sipped through her hair and really just absorbed throughout the hair. Now the reason I use shining jam, you guys, is because it has the perfect tacky consistency feeling to it. It is not slippery. And I know that's a big thing with twists. People want to make sure that their twist is not like silky because it's hard for you to grip if you if the hair is like silky, especially when you're doing twists. So with Shannon Jam, literally, and this is not sponsored by the way, and you guys know I use this product like in all my tutorials. I literally buy at least three bottles a week that I go through. Like I really love this product so much. Um, and the reason I love it is because it just creates the perfect tacky feeling like in, in in the hair that makes it easy for you to grip it also moisturizes your client's hair while you're at it um, and it just creates a very smooth textured finish at the base like it literally just makes the hair look so neat and this is literally my secret ingredient like this is like the Krabby Patty formula for braids <laughs> and you guys when you when it comes to neatness for braids sometimes your hands alone can do the job you need products good products so invest in good products i feel like as a braider this is worth your investment because it's literally like it literally does so much for one little bottle like it creates a smooth finish Okay, it creates the tacky consistency perfect for braiding. Uh, it moisturizes your client's hair. 
Okay, if you have flyaways, it tames fly flyaways while you're braiding. So it does all these little different things that, you know, any braider could possibly ask for, you know. So look into the product, test it out. I'm pretty sure there are other products in the market, but I have tried a lot, okay? And this is the one that I found that really just does it for me. So I thought I'd share. <laughs> and I hope you guys do go out and try it and use this product and let me know how you like it because I really, really 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 highly recommend this product okay <laughs> so i'm gonna show you guys how i get my roots my my braids to stay at the roots as you see that little middle like my index finger that i placed that's like literally right in the center of those twists that is the finger that is gonna keep your hair in the center it's gonna keep it in place you want to make sure that finger is literally as close to the base when you first insert the hair. Before you start twisting, make sure that finger is there because it's going to keep the hair in place from moving. And then when you add the product onto the hair and it mixes all up, it's going to get tacky. It's going to stay just the, you know, it's going to give you that added stickiness that you need to get the product to stay where it needs to stay. So I, when we go when we go into another braid, I'm going to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about again. So I, and I'll... I'll do slow motion just for you guys, just so you see what I'm saying. Because sometimes when you first start braiding, uh, especially when you're doing twists without having to braid at the roots, it's hard to keep that braid centered and in place. So it's very important to, you know, pay attention to your hand movements when you first start uh, and just keep working at it. And I, I know this can be so irritating, like, well, I just want you to tell me exactly what to do. Yeah, I know I have to keep practicing, but sometimes it's not enough. I understand that but trust me the more you practice the more you start noticing little things that you do and that you can do differently and you're gonna keep working on it and then you're gonna get better and then you're gonna create your own technique and method to get it just right okay so I'm gonna show you guys again right here okay since we're starting over and this is a fresh braid I'm gonna show you guys how to get that braid right in center that braiding here so, so that way it doesn't move it literally just stays in place and does exactly what you want it to do okay now pay attention okay now i'm just taking that product okay applying that product notice i always split my hair in half after i've applied the product and let it absorb before i even go into braiding i literally just divide the, the little section that i'm about to, that i'm about to start twisting i literally divide it in half and I do this because I want to make sure that first of all you have two twists two strands for her natural hair and the product you want to do this because you want the product to have entered the center so when you place the hair I always over direct so I place the hair braiding hair on top of her natural hair and then I take a piece of her natural hair and twist it to the right as you can see while I'm grabbing the other hair my hand is being placed at the very center keeping that hair in place while I'm twisting if that makes sense okay so that's literally the trick you over direct the hair like you don't start off by placing the hair in the center you place place the braiding hair literally above like her natural hair because when you over direct it's going to be right in place if you place it exactly where you think you want it to be it's going to be a little bit lowered so keep that in mind you always want to over direct where you like over place it where you want it to be so if, if you want it to be in the center you're going to place take that braiding hair and literally place it at, like at the parting roots and then you twist to the right okay Whew. i really hope i'm explaining these things like good for you guys because sometimes like i be listening to myself talk and i'm just like oh my god i sound all over the place but like i really hope you guys are understanding what i'm saying because words are not my best friend sometimes so um, I may think I know what I'm saying and I know what I'm trying to say, but it doesn't translate So just let me know in the comments and if I have to write it down in the comments, I would do that But um, yeah, so I'm gonna let you guys watch and if you have a mannequin girl pull out that mannequin and you practice 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 Okay, and then I'll catch you guys when we get to the end the fun part when we dip the hair in hot water and lay the baby hairs and all that good stuff Okay, so just hang in there and hang tight and keep practicing
oh hey <laughs> hey guys i hope you didn't miss me too much so this is what the hair is looking like it's looking real nice real consistent real reliable real twisted okay uh this is what it's looking like it looks really nice so i'm gonna go ahead and start doing some trimming okay and yeah we're just gonna take out all the flyaway hairs that we could have possibly could have should have twisted in with the hair but we didn't now you guys i've been seeing a lot of shady comments talking about when your hairstylist is doing this they're really cutting off your hair what <laughs> what you mean <laughs> i'm just kidding but like no that's not true because naturally braiding hair does have flyaway hairs you want to know why because when we feather the hair we're literally like putting pulling all the random pieces of braiding hair into like random places so when you actually start working with the hair it does layer unnaturally so when you twist with it you have little pieces of hair sticking out that's what we're cutting as you can see her hair is not actually sticking out of the twists like it's it's with the product i used i was able to tuck it into the, the twist so you're not you don't see any of her hair just like sticking out that needs to be cut no the only time your hair will stick out if you need like if you're getting twists is when you get like if you have a blunt cut um those are really hard to twist if you just got a fresh cut and you're getting twists good luck because your hair will get cut during the flyaway process unless you don't want it to be cut and you can leave it and you want that messy look good but like just don't get a fresh cut and try to get braids you will have a little bit of flyaways from your natural hair but other than that you're good um so we're just dipping your hair into hot water and i'm gonna be applying my uh what do you call it my mousse now i also get a lot of questions like what does the mousse do what's the point is it just for aesthetic like what what's the purpose of putting that white shiny foam on the hair um well that just adds okay it does two things right it moisturizes the hair it moisturizes your hair inside the hair cools your scalp okay because you you've been twisting your hair everything is real tender it cools your scalp and it also tames some flyaway hairs and i'm going to tell you how it tames the flyaway hair it tames it because i take a little towel that towel i'm using has has been dipped into hot water so it's a little steamy so i just take that towel and like run it over the the mousse that i have on our scalp that is going to add to the mousse and tame your flyaways okay so that's how it works so now i'm taking a brush a toothbrush yes a toothbrush i okay so listen this is a brand new toothbrush okay it does the job for some reason i really really find these more effective than all the edge control brushes out there so that's what i'm using but i i'm gonna upgrade okay you guys i'm going to get it together um i just you know i just love a good old toothbrush for the edges you know don't, don't judge me um so just laying the edges with some gas to be glue mixed with some shining gem for that added tackiness and you know longevity and yeah that's pretty much it you guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did make sure you give the video a thumbs up make sure you like share comment and I'll catch you guys on my next video. Trust me, you guys, you do not want to mix the next video. Like, you do not want to mix the next video. If you miss the next video, girl, I feel sorry for you, girl. You're going to be behind. You're going to be, ooh, you're going to be so mad. <laughs> Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification because if you miss the next video, ooh, Mm, lord have mercy on you okay so i'll catch you guys on my next video have a merry day and god bless goodbye <laughs>